You had meniscus surgery three or more months ago and you're still dealing with knee pain. This is not supposed to happen, but unfortunately it happens all the time. It's very common for somebody recovering from meniscus surgery to still be dealing with pain and swelling even weeks or months after surgery, even if your surgeon told you that it'd just be two or three months before you're back to normal again. In this video, I'm going to tell you the top nine secret reasons for knee pain, even if it's been three or more months since your meniscus surgery. Be sure to watch all nine reasons because it's usually a combination of a few of these reasons that if you take care of those, you're gonna feel tremendously better in your knee pain and swelling if you've had a meniscus surgery. Secret reason number one is too much exercise. Now, if you had a meniscus surgery, chances are you're doing some sort of rehabilitation afterwards. You may be going to physical therapy, you're doing exercises on your own, and you're trying to do your due diligence by doing a good job and doing everything that's asked of you so that you can exercise that knee and get it back to normal as fast as possible. But just like if you were to cut your skin open on the back of your hand, you'd have to scab over Stop the bleeding, of course, first, then scab over and give it enough time to heal so that that scab falls off and you've got nice scar tissue under. Well, similar processes happen inside your knee in the meniscus. That's this bluish structure right here. That meniscus needs to heal. And if you've had surgery, that means it's a surgical precision injury. That's what the surgeon's doing to your meniscus in the hopes that it's going to heal better after they've done the surgery. And while it's healing, you need to give it its space and time. Just like if you were to allow the, the skin in the back of your hand to heal, you need to not do anything to it. You need to baby it and make sure that it heals all the way. Because think about it, if you rub that skin accidentally and you break off that scab, it's gonna to start to bleed again. And you're gonna to have to go through the healing process all over again. If you overdo it and you exercise too much on your meniscus, and your knee swells and becomes painful, stiff again, then that means that you've essentially pulled the scab off, not literally, but it's similar. You've kicked off an inflammation process again in your meniscus, and now it's going to delay your healing time. So you've got to figure out what amount of exercise you can take without peeling off the scab or causing an inflammation process in your knee again. You've got to listen to your knee and only do what it allows you to do without swelling or becoming painful again. Secret reason number two is putting too much weight through your meniscus. The meniscus is designed to be a weight bearing structure, meaning it's supposed to take the full body weight above the knee joint. So from your thigh bone and everything above your pelvis, whenever you go to take a step and walk on it, it's most of your body weight going through that meniscus. That's what it's supposed to do. But if it's injured because you just had surgery that you had for a tear or something before, then it's not going to be prepared to take the full body weight like it normally can. It may be able to take some weight for a time, but after you continue to put weight on it for longer than it's prepared to right now, it's going to begin to swell and become irritated and painful again. So you've got to listen to your knee and take pressure off by either getting off your feet, sitting down, lying down, reducing how much time you're spending on your feet, or another option is to use a cane or a crutch. Getting some crutches like these and making sure you move around using the crutches allows you to still get around, still be on your feet, but not put your full body weight through that knee so that you can allow it to heal. Just in case you're looking for a cane or crutch recommendation, I've linked a couple from Amazon in the description below. Secret reason number three that your knee is still running into problems after meniscus surgery is forcing it to stretch more than it wants to right now. Right after a meniscus surgery, you're usually going to lose some motion. You're not gonna be able to straighten out your knee all the way or bend your knee all the way. Now this doesn't happen with everyone, but most people, I'd say about half, experience some loss of motion and a percentage of those have a continued loss of motion even for weeks or months after because many of them get their full motion back within a couple of weeks. For those individuals that do have limitations in motion, even if it's been weeks after the procedure, then they need to make sure they stretch their knee to get that full range of motion back. But what you shouldn't do is force it to the point where you're starting to swell and get irritated in the knee joint again because just like with pulling off the scab, it's as if you're pressing 
on your skin where the scab is and eventually you're gonna rip that scab off. Same thing happens here when you bend that knee all the way or straighten it, it adds compression to the meniscus and then you're setting it up to become re-irritated again. So instead, try doing minor stretches, light stretches on a more gradual intensity so that you don't have any effects afterwards. You should feel just fine. If anything, just a teeny tiny bit sore, not, not sore so much that you get painful and swollen again, but like you compress the knee just a very tiny amount. And you're better off doing that very frequently throughout the day. Instead of doing intense stretches a few times a day, you should be doing light gradual stretches very frequently, like every 30 minutes or every hour, and you'll see an improvement in your range of motion without swelling or becoming irritated in your knee joint. Secret reason number four that you're still having meniscus pain months after is not drinking enough water. This is one of the most overlooked things and it's kind of simple. If you just up your water intake, chances are you're going to move along healing processes a bit faster because everything in your body, all the, all the functions of cells in your body, especially the ones that are having to work harder because they're healing right now, they occur in water. All the different molecules move around, all the hormones, everything that happens inside of a cell in order for it to operate and function, removing waste. There's so many things that happen inside cells that you don't even know about, that, you don't, that we're not aware of it and conscious of. It all happens inside the water inside your cells. And there's water outside your cells too. So making sure that you down enough water every single day while you're recovering from your meniscus surgery is critical to make sure you have enough fluids in your body for all the processes to happen as normally as possible. Absolutely, your water intake requirements are going to increase after surgery because of all the cells that have an increased metabolism inside your knee joints. The simplest way to know how much water to drink is to take your body weight in pounds. So let's say I weigh 200 pounds, I'm a little bit more than that. Cut that number in half, so that's 100 pounds. Use 100 ounces as your minimum water intake. And really you should shoot between the half number to the full number of your body weight in ounces. So 100 to 200 ounces is what I should be shooting for. Said differently, if you weigh 200 pounds, then you need 100 to 200 ounces of water every day and i'd shoot more on the 200 side because you're healing right now that works out to about three to six liters of water for somebody who's about 90 kilograms that's the conversion secret reason number five is relying on a knee brace like this very often after meniscus surgery you'll be given a knee brace or you might seek one out because it just feels better to put one on sometimes you have instructions from the surgeon to wear one always follow your surgeon's instructions because depending on the procedure that was done for instance a meniscus repair there might be sutures inside your meniscus in your knee in other words stitches and because of those sutures, you cannot bend your knee and you need to make sure you wear the brace because it might be stopping you from bending a certain amount. But if it's been three or more months, you've been told that you don't need a knee brace anymore, or it's optional, some people still wear the knee brace because they're relying on it to feel better. Now, I'm not saying don't wear a knee brace. All I'm saying is it's okay for you to wear it because you feel better, but don't use it as an excuse to do whatever the heck you want and charge through things in life and then end up with a more swollen, aggravated knee afterwards. The fact that you're wearing a knee brace is not a license to do anything. This doesn't actually improve the mechanics tremendously in your knee. In other words, it's not aligning the joint tremendously better. It's usually just an, an effect of, of that comfort, of the, the compression around your knee and the stability that it gives you. That extra comfort allows you to feel like you don't need to take pain medications, which is good. But you still need to allow that cartilage, that meniscus, to heal enough to do all the activities that you want to do again. So you still got to keep your activity level within the ranges that is not going to make your knee swell more or hurt more despite wearing the knee brace. You can put it on, just don't count on it to get you more steps in the day or more time in your feet. That doesn't always happen. Number six secret reason is focusing on quad exercises. The quad muscles are the muscles on the front of the thigh right here that connect to the kneecap. They're the big ones that you'll see on the front of your thigh and they help you to straighten out your knee. When you straighten out your knee and lock it out, you should feel the, the front of the thigh muscles tighten up very well. 
Many people who have had a meniscus surgery really focus on getting these muscles significantly stronger after the surgery. In fact, they're told by healthcare professionals very often to do that, to focus on getting their quad muscles stronger. And it makes sense at face value because they've usually lost a lot of the muscle mass here. They're looking at their thigh and they're saying, oh, my leg's shrunk, I need to get the muscle back. But the reason this might actually be causing you more meniscus pain right now, even though you've already had your surgery, is that these muscles, when they get too strong, they actually add compression to the knee joint and squash the meniscus more. Now, right after surgery, like the next day for that first week after surgery, usually the thigh muscles here shut down. They don't work very well. In some cases, it takes a lot of mental effort to make the muscle tighten up and flex again. If that's the case in you, then yes, you need to focus on your quads for a short time until you can get conscious control of those muscles again. Once you've got conscious control, even though they've shrunk a bit compared to your other leg, that doesn't mean that you need to continue to focus on strengthening them. Now you need to look at other muscle groups, usually the glutes, in order to get good control in your knee joints and not over compress the meniscus. The number seven secret reason that you still have problems three or more months after meniscus surgery is that foot muscles have not been addressed. Right after surgery, the big focus is on all the muscles around the knee joint and the poor foot doesn't get much attention. But if you have a fallen arch on your foot, this part of the foot right here collapses downwards, that may have been contributing to bad forces going through your knee joint. And it's important for you to learn how to create an arch to be able to support the knee joint because when your arch collapses down, if you look at this shin bone right here, that shin bone goes inwards and that shifts the position of the knee joint. But when you can create an arch, then it shifts the position of this bone back more upright and normalizes pressures at the meniscus. Now this is rarely, if ever, discussed with people who have had a meniscus surgery because it's not on a surgeon's radar. And for physical therapists that are helping people after meniscus surgery, that's not the most important thing for them. They just need to get your knee bending and straightening again and be able to get you up on your feet to walk. But addressing foot muscle strength in the arches is incredibly important with making sure that this problem doesn't come back over and over again and that you can get rid of the meniscus surgery pain a few months after the surgery happens. The number eight secret reason for continued meniscus problems, even though it's been months after the surgery, is not addressing glute strength. Now in the knee joint, let me step back here, you have the glutes up here and the glutes are incredibly important because when they contract and work properly, they influence the position of the thigh bone. And that thigh bone is the top part of the knee joint. So if you have good glute strength, you help to normalize the pressures on the meniscus at the knee joint. Glutes along with the foot muscles are probably the two most important muscle groups to be strengthening after meniscus surgery in order to normalize the pressures in the meniscus at the knee. If you're not addressing the glute and the foot strength, then chances are you're over compressing the meniscus and that's why you continue to swell and have pain in your meniscus. Now, the last three secret reasons I gave you, quad focused exercises, flat arches in the feet, and not having enough glute strength, combined come together to make a muscle imbalance. And that's secret reason number nine, each of these components on their own can make a huge difference, but when you look at it all together as a muscle imbalance affecting the pressures in the knee, now you can make an enormous impact on healing your meniscus problem for the long term. And it's extremely important because many people that have had a meniscus surgery, especially a meniscectomy where they've had a chunk of the meniscus removed, they're susceptible to getting knee osteoarthritis in the coming years. So fixing that root muscle imbalance is critical so that you can normalize the pressures, preserve your remaining meniscus, and avoid or at least delay osteoarthritis in your knee joint for as long as absolutely possible. Addressing the root muscle imbalance, number nine, helps you to get your arch up correctly to address the position of the shin bone on the bottom. Getting the glutes stronger up top helps you to address the position of the thigh bone up top. So now you have good appropriate pressure to the knee joints. And then not focusing on over strengthening your quad muscles is tremendously important too because then you don't get an over compression from the quads pulling the shin bone up into the thigh bone. It's highly unlikely 
that you've ever addressed this if you're recovering from a meniscus surgery because that's not what the surgery is focused on. The surgery is focused on repairing something that's torn or removing something that needs to be taken out of your knee joints. But fixing the muscle imbalance is a whole other specialty. You may still have bad forces going through your knee joint and it's affecting your meniscus. That's why I've created the Knee Meniscus Recovery Program. It's an online and on-demand program that you can access from anywhere you've got internet connection and a screen, like a smartphone, a tablet, or a computer. It's designed to address the root underlying problem, the muscle imbalance that's affecting the compressive forces at the knee joint. When you have too much compression going through that meniscus, it's just not going to heal properly. You can learn more about the Knee Meniscus Recovery Program through the link below. Go check that out. Thanks so much for watching. I hope this video benefited you. Please give us a thumb. Please give us a thumbs up if you thought it did. And don't forget to share this with somebody you think needs to see this. Please subscribe and turn on your notification bell so you don't miss out on any of our helpful videos coming up. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.